Thanks for joining us. I'm Ty Comer, editor of Billboard.com. We're back again for another live Q&A sponsored by MSN. And uh, we have a very special guest today. You know him. You love him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Nick Jonas. Hello, hello. Yeah, I ho- hope they love me. I was not, oh, we hate that guy. No, <laughs> uh, from the flurry of emails and tweets that we've gotten all week, I can guarantee you that that the fans still love you. Okay, cool. And Glad I think that. that you were actually the uh, the first repeat guest we've had for our live Q&A series. So. Oh, wow. I'm honored. Look at that. Yes. Thank you. So Appreciate welcome it. back. I'm happy to be here. So as I mentioned, we've had a ton of questions that are that are have come through from your fans, and we're gonna get to the, we're gonna get to those in a second. Um, but first, I wanted to make sure that we talked about the new contest that you have going on. So tell us a little bit about the Quaker Chewy Superstar Search. Yeah, this is a really exciting project that I started with Quaker, basically to to find the next superstar within the ages of eight to fourteen. Um, you know, we're looking for for someone who was or is as passionate about music as I was at that age. Um, where hopefully I can, you know, kind of mentor this person and, and, and guide them uh, with the, with what I've learned in my journey so far. Um, and I'll be producing a song for them as well. And, and you know, when I when I spoke with Quaker about what we could do together, you know, the, the thing is I made writing and producing my main focus for this year. Uh, and so it felt like the right fit to, to find the next superstar and then produce a song for him and, and really wrap uh, all of our fans together with their fans of their, their snacks and, and my fans on the music front. To, uh, to, to make something great out of this, and, and we're really excited about it. Mm-hmm. Um, now, explain to us how the submission process works and how you eventually go towards finding the, uh, the Quaker Chewy Superstar. Yeah, it's a, it's a really cool, uh, cool way we're doing it. It's all online submissions. Um, so basically, um, you record a video. We've provided a list of songs for you to choose from. And that's, that's one of the most important pieces. You know, I think that... Um, just finding the song that fits the person's voice is going to be really crucial, uh, and and making sure that um, you know it's a song that that they can make their own as well. Uh, a lot of people have been asking, you know, what what kind of artists are you looking for? And the truth is, we're just looking for a real artist, whatever that means, whatever genre, whatever style. Um, as long as when they you know when they sing and when they are in this video, we can see um, that they've got what what it takes to uh, really step out and shine. So you're looking for that X factor, as it is, or something genuine. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think we're you know we're looking for someone who's passionate about music, and who who really uh, can't contain it. You know, the the thing about um, music is that it it's got to come from the heart, and and I think that you know finding a young person who is who is passionate about music and and wants to make this a career is an exciting thing because you know there's a world of opportunity for young people in music. Um, the prizes that you have for the contest are pretty great too. Um, as you mentioned, you'll be producing a single for this person. Um, you're also going to hook them up with a management group, and there's five grand. So there's quite a big, it's quite a bit at stake for the winner. There is. Um, it <laughs> I was like, man, I wish I had that when I started. That'd be <laughs> great. Um, you know, my journey was a lot different, and and I think that um, over the years I've been really blessed to have enough experience to be able to share what I've learned with whoever wins this competition because. Um, I don't want to look at it as a judge. It's not what I what I see myself being in this, but more so just a um, a mentor for this person, and, and hopefully be able to guide them and and uh, direct them in a really productive way. Mm-hmm. Um, I was looking at the the website, and uh, you have a couple of videos on there where you're using some of the knowledge that you've gained over the years to sort of you know give some tips and advice for the people who are going to enter. Um, one of the things that you talked about was choosing the right song, and this is something that we hear on you know every sort of talent competition that's out. How it's very very important to choose the right song. Yeah. When you're dealing with people who are at such a young age and who haven't quite found their voice yet. Um, what steps do you think people can take to sort of help find that voice and to help them pick the right song? Well, I think it's all about, you know, uh, taking advice from other people. Um, you know, there's, there's wisdom in a multitude of counsels, and, and I think that if you uh, sing, you know, pick maybe five or songs and just sing each one for your group of friends or your, you know, your parents or whatever it is, and then see what fits your voice best. And I think, you know, there, there will be a general consensus as to what the best one is. And then if there's not, then I think just go with your heart and what you, what you feel. Okay. Um, there's another part in, in the, uh, on the page in one of the videos where you used to sort of talk about being comfortable on stage, getting over stage fright. Obviously, you're a pro at this now, but when you were first starting out, did you have issues with stage fright or were you always so confident? 
being in front of a crowd? I don't know. You know, I, I started in musical theater here in New York City, and and um, you know, because it was a professional career in music, sort of from the start for me, um, it sort of forced me to to kind of take it on as an adult. You know, really at a very young age, and to to look at it as a job um, while still being something I was passionate about. You know, I really knew uh, the sort of severity of the of the thing I was doing, and and um, and so it was sort of just like. Uh, I had to step up and, and do it, and there was no, no room for stage fright. But, um, I mean, for people that have dealt with it, you know, I feel like the best way to go about it is to just keep your focus and, and, and know that it's what you're passionate about, mm -hmm. and it should help you get right through it.